Welcome to this first module of our uh, series about digital architectonics, the primer. And uh, I want to talk about uh, how to take space, which is a kind of surprising question, but it will, it's very substantial but it will give us uh, a lot of hints uh, how to, uh, yeah, what architecture might be in, uh, in quantum space of today and what role, what kind of role code and uh, machine intelligence, big data uh, might play. There is no answer, but we can uh, uh, argue in a very uh, helpful uh, way to uh, get an understanding what the points are we can do our research, architectural research in, in our architectural practice today. So let's start. There's uh, Palladio. This is a drawing of Palladio. And I ask myself, is it possible to think about Renaissance architecture without these drawings? Especially if you compare it with this, the reality of Gothic cathedrals, for example. And I would say, let's make a very clear distinction between these both. I would say this drawing is about ratio. This cathedral is about the real. And to give it, give it, give that more substance, make it more heavy, I would say this is about the mind and this is about the body. I do not say that Renaissance is without body, but I say mind first in Renaissance. And just the other way around. There's no, there's, it's not, a ra there, there's, there is not no uh, ratio in, uh, in, in, in the Gothic architecture, quite the opposite. But reality and the body is first, the sensible is first. So especially, and this is what we want to use it for, is that my hypothesis is this is in classical mechanic uh, a drawing and uh, this is in parallel to the uh, quantum mechanical uh, setup of the 20th century architecture and uh, this is what we the, the realm of reality we left around 1900 with the upcoming of uh, quantum uh, mechanics for example the new mathematics and new technologies and so on uh, this corresponds to enlightenment, uh, classicism, romantic, uh, romanticism and in architecture uh, of 18th, 19th uh, century. So how did they do that? Oh, just to make, to, to, to get a kind of skeleton to work with. This is, uh, corresponds to space first and this corresponds to time first. So. How did they do that? Here, they introduced a mechanics, a perspective we know as perspective drawing. So this is a mechanics. Let's keep this conception. And the mechanics is, if we can look it up uh, ethnologically, is a piece of art, surprisingly. It's not a dirty, dirty uh, piece of, of, uh, of, of uh, techno techniques or machines and, 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 and so on. We, we disrespectfully uh, say today, it's a piece of art. So it's how to, to tr make a trick dealing with elements of nature in full respect with nature to 
achieved something working which had never been seen before. So, and this is a technique for that. And a technique is not a technology. It's a trick. If you look it up, what a technique is. It's something you know and you're able to do. And by that, by this skill, you are able to leave reality and establish a certain ratio, which is renaissance, a rebirth of a new architecture. So let's have a look how this mechanics works. Imagine a piece of uh, reality. And then like in this illustration of 19th century, it's the famous one, this guy here is leaving the cosmological order of reality. And it's finding another space, another scale of space. So, so he's leaving, getting an outside position and he's looking at reality with a certain perspective. So, and he's able to move, to take another perspective to reality. And he's able to move back or forth or go around. There might be somebody else looking at reality in other circles and so on. So the interesting is that if this is reality, this is time, and if you leave time like this, and if you enter space like this. This, con this, this technique in space needs first cuts reality. You take a certain perspective, it cuts reality or it cuts time. And you need another perspective. So you need to look at it from another perspective. So you need a second one, like for example, we have it with our two eyes. And you have the difference, it's a differential. And there is, you should look up Descartes, 17th century. The differential, or um, with um, Deleuze and Guattari, uh, difference and rep repetition. This is about uh, uh, this topic. You need two perspectives and then the notion of space comes up. And this is the, dif the, the intellectual difference between two perspectives. The technique to put that and make that visible is the perspective drawing. We have this. So the first thing is, if we are all moving around, we have to talk about certain things. And what we observe is that this is a planetary system. Everything is rotating in circles. Therefore, this is a Copernican We have this. What you see, if you look at the sky, if you look at all the stars, and if you behave like them, so if you go out of this planetary order and you step out 
of the cosmological order, get an outside view of that, then you see certain proportions in time. So you need, if this is, this is time, it's moving around. The, the stars or you are moving around. And then you see certain constellations, for example, one to four, one to five, one to three, in certain dynami diameters and a certain speed, uh, then uh, uh, distances to a, to a center of the, uh, of the sun. So it's heliocentric and it's not any longer real. So you have proportions. And you have repetitions. And it's discrete. These are the notions of space. Yeah. Let's have a look here. This is a small uh, program to give you a cube. And you see, these are now these are flat lines and you have to move. And it constantly you have to move. You see the difference between these different perspectives and by that this conception of space intellectually gets vivid. So this object gets vivid and you got this notion of space. And it instantly collapses if you uh, stop moving. So, and these movements are in certain proportions. What Alberti and Vitruvius say, they are proportionalities or characteristics in space, of figures in space, they're ionic, Doric, and Corinthic. Characters of space, or so this is how these drawings are thought. So this is the scale or the, the, the substance of space of the classical uh, mechanics. So it's not, it's very important. What we currently always see that uh, people explain how to do it. And we see it with CAT systems as well. So we see it with how, how did Alberti do these perspective drawings? And then we take a ruler and a pencil and do it. Or we have the tutorials how to uh, model a, a three-dimensional object with the CAT system. It's always with computers how to. I don't think this is a proper question. We don't want that. So we want to ask how to take space, so it's an architectural question. It's not a technical question. This how, we want to say what all this is about. What's it? This is what we want to ask. And therefore it's very misleading, for example, with Panofsky, perspective as a symbolic form is very present that you say, at the end of the, uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, when it was about to, re to establish uh, a kind of quantum perspective, that we, uh, we have this, that de facto these the things are curved. So that the perspective de facto is in the logic of time. And they, we currently call that, uh, it's the, um, <coughs> it's the uh, physiological uh, perception of that, which is always primary of uh, time. Then we see, of course, with the eye and it's round, and then we have the straight lines of uh, perspective drawing, but the, uh, 
the canvas of the projection is curved and therefore de facto we have a curved uh, notion of space. This is simply not the question. The question is how to make the difference. And then you think a ratio in between and this ratio is always discrete, like quantum space is discrete, it's a quantum space. And like these perspective drawings here, they are discrete. And the key invention is forget about the reality of the physi physiological thing. Forget about your senses. You cut, you cut, because you know all reality is fake. You cut it and then you make, you make a difference and the difference is straight. It has to be straight. So therefore these things are true of course and you see it with the lenses of, uh, of a photograph of course you instantly see that you can compensate that and so on but that's not the question. So what Greek people did for example with their temples they made the columns and they made it look like very straight but the body of the, uh, the columns was, uh, was curved like time. So they embody time but they are not in time. So it's very straight how the points, they are straight and they have to be straight. Especially you see that here with, um, with this Camille in Paris. So the, the uh, foundations and the floor plane of the, of the temples is always curved to give the impression, the, the physiological impression of a straight line. So therefore the horizontal of the, of, of the temples looks straight knowing or forgetting that uh, things are curved in our uh, perception. So they made it ex explicitly and with, with, with great effort they made it straight and they put straight lines for the, for the vertical and then with great effort they make uh, the columns embody them in curved uh, lines representing time. So space is always discrete and space is um, here discrete. It's in repetitions, it's in proportions. Time is always curved. So because in the planetary system the curve here is in, in time. So you run around back and forth and you need time to cut, to cut uh, the, the, the time and the space is the difference of two cuts in time. Very complicated and exactly the opposite of the argumentations of for example Panofsky which is a very prominent um, um, a figure in, in the when uh, art history and architectural theory was uh, founded. So let's go further. If you see how it works, the discretization of space. This is uh, again Renaissance Baroque. Flegel is still alive. And what we have here with these apples, there are four of them, they tri triangulate space. So therefore, what they what what is there in this drawing are four points no here and here so there are four points and the tetrahedron so and with our eye we have to move to see this apple or this apple and we have to turn you see how the apples are turned we have to turn we have to move and then we get this conception of space which is discrete which is of lines, which is straight, discrete, and proportional. Yeah? And with that, the things get, uh, uh, with this skeleton, things get round, um, uh, colorful, bright, strong, and so on. But that's, these are the colors, uh, the, the spectral colors here, and so on. They are vivid because they have these they are within the mechanics and they are vivid by themselves so they are not vivid in a, in a, 
in a huge uh, organism. They are elements in space. And they are crystalline, discrete. So if we go further, we can uh, look at this, this is what Dürer. I don't want to take the Vitruvian man of Leonardo, it's too cliche. It's the same thing here. So we have the square. This is about space, these are lines. And we have the circle. And we have the human body mediating between circle and line, between space and time. And the very interesting thing is that the navel is the center of the circle, which is reality. Whereas a gender is the center, uh, center of space, of the rectangle and ratio. And the human body is mediating in between. Which means, like these apples, which are strong, vivid, and off curves around mechanical points, we have this kind of human body. It's a skeleton moving, strongly moving, vivid body, strongly, with around points of mechanics. All this is Renaissance. So if we go to mathematics of classical mechanics, we have this, a swinging rope, which is resonating in, in, uh, in this difference, in this space, with the factor three in this case. What you can see are these points, they are still, they are of geometry, they are in space, the others are of time, so the swinging curve are in time. This is what you have here with the human body. We have certain points of mechanics and then swinging curves in between, getting into a certain proportion. This is how it works. This is the mechanics of it. Yeah. And the proportions. Good. To transfer it to from classical mechanics to quantum mechanics of 20th century, to transfer it from uh, 15th, 16th century to 20th, 21st century, this is, this might be interesting to uh, see. This is a complex number plane. So a complex number plane, we had it here. So let's, let's uh, 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 just go here. So for example, so just make it a little clear. We have the ratio and the real. We said that the real is not without ratio and the ratio is not real without real. So these things are not poles of, uh, of an axis. It's not like this, that uh, this is, for example, the past and this is the future. It's both in, in time or so. It's, it's about, <coughs> so it, it's not about critique. It's about not about uh, a plus and minus and so on. It's orthogonal. So it's another axis and it's completely invisible for, uh, for mutually invisible they are. So when we say here this is uh, space and this is time. And today we say this is, uh, these are the real, uh, this is a uh, it's a real part and this is the imaginary part of a complex number plane. And this body, so this is with the squares and this is with the circles. And the embodiment 
is this rotations today in complex number plane. Yeah? So there is no mind without body, no body without mind. And what is visible, like, like here, is that you're moving in space and in time, and by that you get, uh, you get, I call it capsules of time, precious capsules of time. Yeah, so it's not, it's a dichotomy, and it's not a plus minus of, of a pole. So I always say, um, you can't see what you hear. So in space you talk, and uh, the senses for time is, uh, is the eye, is the see. Yeah, this is with lines, this is with circles. The other way around. Good. Now here, what is this? So we have two points, like I have a, a line in these drawings, in these drawings, we have a line, this line is rotating, it's always rotating, there is no straight line, so we have an abstract difference between two points, and the in-between is always rotating, swinging, active, alive. So in the mathematics, it's in complex, there's a complex plane. So you have two points, they are still, like them. And in-between, it's not a line rotating, it's space rotating. So and this is the uh, time-space curvature. So ro space is rotating and represented like a rainbow. It's a circle rainbow and projected to this two-dimensional uh, uh, image. And there's another thing rotating here. And these things, these two points are now communicating because they are tuning themselves towards a certain resonance, like it's a resonance here. And it's not with a line in, in complex number plane or with quantum physics, it's with the space. That's the difference. So this is the complex line. It's a curvature of, of the rotating spaces. So that's more abstract. So this is classical mechanics and this is quantum mechanics. If you have a technical view, this is uh, the uh, matrix uh, of Google. You have a lot of points in space, the same here, and then there's a certain neighborhood of points. So for example, point uh, 100 has uh, because everything is in curvature, everything is curved around, then we say, what is the distance of this point to the other points? So the shortest path in this, in this curved uh, 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 space. And the nearer it is, the brighter this point is. So let's say this is 1,000 points. So this is a pattern of the neighborhood of this point in quantum space. The neighboring and so on. And of course, uh, the point is neighbor to its, the points are always neighbor to itself. So what we have here is that this axis here is a certain position in to reality. So you have a certain position and you look to reality and by this specific view turns the whole story towards your perspective. Here. That's the matrix of Google. 
if you ask another question, you get another perspective. That's how the things work today. And if we go then to in contrast to this, this man here or the Vitruvian man and what we know famously with uh, Corbusier here, the, the book here, the Modulor, the Modulor here with Corbusier, it's online as well. You see it's not the proportion like this, it's not a mechanical proportion. In strict difference of what you, you read in uh, at architectural theory and, and so on. It's not like this. It's not a mechanics. Because these proportions are continuous in, uh, in, in uh, they are, they're continuous in, uh, in, in their line, in their development. So therefore, it's not like this. It's not a proportion as we know it uh, from re Renaissance. It's a quantum proportion. It's like something like uh, this axis, which is a certain perspective uh, to, uh, to space-time. If you read the text, it's a very early example. I uh, think you can find it. It would take a lot of time to, to make a proper argument for that. So this is uh, 1946 and he knew all these things and he's promoting the uh, new uh, scale of architecture as uh, um, the, the most prominent protagonist uh, of the 20th century. So it's important that it's not you can't describe it like this. It's more about code, it's more about the quantum, it's more about the space-time curvature and so on. Otherwise, it would not be like uh, continuous proportionality of things instead of proportions. These are proportions here, proportions, this is proportionality, the next level of abstraction. Good. Now let's go for our example, uh, for our primary question, what we had with uh, Alberti. If now we see how to take space, this is what we, what we want, to, uh, want to, uh, to ask. And we can go for the 10 books of architecture in Vitruvius and uh, especially I didn't analyze it precisely enough but with Alberti it's uh, very clear like this. And I want to show you that it's getting super simple. That's the nice message. So therefore they have to take care that you keep the complexity I, uh, I opened up uh, in this module. So what Alberti is saying you take <coughs> uh, the, uh, they have the ground. This is the flow of, I, I would say the flow of time. Or in our discussions, this is reality. So you make, take a point. This is even with Euclid like that, take a point. We call, today call it module. It's a point, and the point is the, the one who has no parts. So it's not part of reality. So it is not reality. And therefore it's zero dimension in our terms. And <coughs> uh, we, we say this point is a rational point and uh, it's not any reality, but it's positioned at a certain point in space and by that yeah so then you take another point here that's a capital so and you put it on the orthogonal here 
orthogonal axis, which means this is space. So it's not horizontal, it's space. So, and you simply say, this is a capital. Put that like this. And then you say, this element here, which is a column, in 1D, this is off space. So you give them, uh, off time, which will give them a body. So you have the, the statue, which is dead in time and upright in space. That's a column. So it's intellectual. You simply say, what I want to do is not of reality. You make a clear gesture, upright gesture. You, you, you go up and say the ratio. Take another point in a certain proportion, Doric, Ionic, uh, Corinthic in a certain proportion and give that a body and celebrate that uh, this is of human proportion. This is what we have with the Vitruvian man and what we have with uh, uh, Corbusier. So that's the first step. You can look it up directly in uh, Alberti. So second step is the second conception is you simply put that into a line. And he calls that, it's a two-dimensional thing, and he calls that wall. And he makes no conceptual difference between wall, a series of columns, openings, and so on. It's just wall, which is 2D in our today's understanding, Cartesian understanding. So, and the third thing is, put that into volume. It's 3D, and he calls that the roof. And he makes no distinction between the floor, the foundation, the roof, different floors, and so on. It's just the roof, which is 3D. So we have 0D, 1D, 3D, uh, 2D, 3D. And surprisingly, that's it, Alberti, 15th century, 10 books of architecture. This is how to take space in architecture in a certain proportion according to man, human. So we, we had it uh, here. So this is Alberti. This is today. If you want an ex example of how to think about space today, so this is how to go to the proportions with, uh, and, and do these kind of uh, taking space, the proportions. If you want to have the inverse, the negative form of that, you can, for example, go with uh, another scale of architecture from Ishigami here. And he's talking about qualifying the volume of this space. He simply says there's something new in it in quantum space. So it's not a mechanical space as we described it in terms of antique or Euclidean geometry now, he says it's of another scale. So it's always of a global scale. You can, can see if you, if you look at these planetary systems and it's always global, of course. And the conceptions of today, and this is very interesting what he, what he, what he, he suggests, is five chapters. First, another scale of architecture. Second, so the first is clouds, it's an environmental, forest, horizon, sky, and rain. And what you see then is different characteristics, how to fill the space in a beautiful manner. This is with the 
clouds. This is where the rain. With the forest. And with the rain. So I think this is enough to give you an idea what is it about. So the principal mechanics is very simple. We can anchor it very precisely in our architectural tradition. The very idea of architecture and of a renaissance is to re-articulate re in a renaissance, to re-articulate architecture in a new scale. And my hypothesis is, and we have indicators with Ishigami, we have it with, uh, with Corbusier, and so on. We, have, we are able to read the whole 20th century, 21th century like that. The challenging thing is how to domesticate this new scale of architecture. Thanks for looking and I'm looking forward with to interesting discussions in our classes. See you with the next module.